Welcome to Top Solid 7, and the first sneak peek into Top Solid 7.7 .7 and the all new and powerful Top Solid 7 split. In this sample, we're going to introduce you to creating core and cavity blocks in the Top Solid 7 platform. Let's get started. Here we see a little assembly. Uh, it's called router. It's just a series of two parts. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this top part and go ahead and create a core and cavity separation for it. To do that, I'm going to go and grab the top housing. I'm going to right mouse button click on it here in our project tree, and I'm going to send it into a split blocks document. Go ahead and validate that. From here, we have to tell Top Solid what kind of shrink factor we want to use. Do we want to use a global or a differential shrink? Well, here I'm just going to use a global, and I'm going to do a six thousandths shrink factor. Once the shrink is complete, from there, I'm going to go ahead and minimize my project, so we're just looking at our part. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the software what the stock block size is that I want to create a core and cavity block for. So here I'm just going to keep it simple, and I'm going to use just a standard block. And you can see that I can rotate this around, and I can stretch this as I want. I could double-click on the balloons and set it exactly to the dimensions that I want. Maybe we want that to be four and three quarters. You know, and maybe what we want is to change that reference point that we're centering this block around. So right off the bat, the first thing I want to show you is that I'm going to go ahead and build a new frame on the fly. It's just going to be an offset of our existing frame. We'll offset it up in Z, maybe to about there. Okay, we'll validate that. Now our block is shifted up some. We'll validate that again, and we're good to go. From here, what I'd like to do is go ahead and create our parting lines. And that happens to be the next icon in row here. So I'm going to go to Candidate Edges. My molding axis is going to be my absolute Z. I could do it off my molding frame as well. doesn't really matter. Like that, you see it comes up with a bunch of candidate parting lines. We'll go ahead and validate that. And now we're just going to start selecting the parting lines that we want to use. Oops. So you can see I misselected something. That's okay. We can just deselect it there. Go ahead and validate the outer one. We'll grab that. Perfect. And now I'm going to flip this over and start selecting these internal ones. And as you can see, I can just go ahead and click on the edge. It's following along the tangency or the uh, of the parting lines themselves. Go ahead around to the other side and complete these parting lines. So something that's really interesting about our parting lines, as soon as we have all the parting lines defined that we need to separate this into two shells, the software goes ahead and does just that. It'll separate this into two shells. And here in just one second, you're going to see exactly what I mean. Watch the part as I validate this. Boom. See that? So we have purple for the cavity side and blue for the core side. So the split, in fact, is done at this point. Now we want to add some parting surfaces to it. So let's go ahead and do that next. Okay, so I'm going to go to external parting surfaces next. Why not? It doesn't really matter. We can just go in whatever order we want. And I'm just going to use a simple extrusion method. I'm going to start right there. I'm going to go that way. And I'm going to go all the way to here. And as you can see, it creates the necessary parting surface. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to start right there, and I'm going to go to here. Perfect. Now what I want to do is I'm going to start from this edge, and I'm going to go to this edge. But you notice it doesn't have anything in the corners. Well, that's no problem. You see these little grips here? If I just double click on them, it'll extend the surfaces out orthogonally in those directions. Well, that's pretty nice. Let's zoom up again. We'll grab this edge. We'll go to this edge. I'm going to double click on the points to again get them extended as I want. And like that, my external parting surface is complete. So now let's maybe do some shutoff surfaces on the inside, shall we? Let's have a look. So I'm going to go to shutoff surface. 
we have a couple choices. We have edges, faces, or shape. I'm going to go on edges, and I'm just going to use a face right here. Why not? And I'm going to choose my edge. And if you notice, the software is nice enough to automatically use all of the surrounding faces to create that internal shutoff for us. So now let's see if it's that convenient for the rest of the shutoffs. We'll choose a reference face, an edge, an edge. You have to admit this actually is pretty simple. We're using the surrounding geometry to create the shutoff surfaces for you automatically. And these are multi-face shutoffs following the multi-faces of the actual part that we're creating our core and cavity blocks from. Go ahead and validate those. And now let's flip this over and do this last side. You know, some might ask, can we mirror the parting surfaces since they seem to be the same? Um, simple answer is yes, why not? Um, my only argument is, since this is such a simple procedure, by the time you do the mirror and all that stuff, I'm already done selecting this. So just whatever floats your boat. Okay, like that, our parting surfaces are complete. From here, the only thing left we have to do is do our split. So let's go do that. Here I'm going to go ahead to parting shells. We'll select that function. And what the software is doing here is a quick check, in fact. It's checking to make sure that when it does the separation and makes the copies of the parting surfaces that it can create clean sets of surfaces to trim the solids by. As you can see, you can move this up and down if you like. You can rotate, pan, zoom, do whatever you want to analyze everything. We'll say that's good to go, so we'll validate that. And from here, we're going to ask the software to actually create our parting shapes. And in just a second, you're going to see the core and cavity blocks have been created. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go ahead and validate. Now, here you can still see our parting lines. Up here you see a lovely little function that allows you to visualize those. Of course, we can hide the part and look at it. We can hide this part and look at, you know, whatever. So that's pretty nice. Notice the parting surfaces are set as one color so you know what's a shutoff surface and what's molding. So from here what I'd like to do maybe is go back and see about creating some inserts now. Okay? So now I'm going to go back and do insert creation. And if you notice when I do that, it kind of manages everything automatically for you. It rolls everything back. It puts us back into our parting surfaces automatically. If you want, you can visualize your parting lines again. From here, what we want to do is create some inserts. So let's have a look. Maybe to begin with, what we'd like to do is maybe we want to create some inserts for these. Because maybe you're going to use a sleeve ejection pin around this or whatever. Who knows? We're just going to keep it nice and simple. Um, I'm going to select maybe oh, this profile right here. And you can notice it's making the insert for us. Let's do that again. I'm going to do that on this side. And the whole idea here is to just get quickly to the rough in insert shapes that you're looking for. Perfect. Let's go ahead and validate those. So these are going to come across as new parting lines and new parting surfaces. So it's just a parting surface right now. But you can see that it changed the color inside there to represent that that is going to be an insert now. Okay. Let's maybe look at another way of making uh, an insert. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch outside of here. Um, we're going to go ahead and oh, I'll create the sketch right here. Why not? Okay. And what I want to do is maybe create an insert for all of this. Now I could have done it by edge selection, like I just showed you, but I just want to show you a couple different ways of working inside of Top Solid 7 today. Maybe this insert we just want it to be a nice square insert like that. Who knows? So I'm going to go ahead and just lay out a sketch. Um, I'm going to start here. I'm going to come across some distance. I'm going to come down some distance. I'm going to turn off projection here real quick. I'll come over and back to here. Good enough. We'll let that go like that. 
Uh, I'm just going to quickly orient this to be vertical. And I'm going to sketch this around and just kind of add some dimensions. Uh, the first dimension I might do is a centered dimension, about the center of our part. And maybe we want this to be 3 and 3 quarters. Looks good to me. Now I'm going to bring this up here. Oops. Just want to drag that up just a little bit. And I want to go from here maybe to, oh, how about the edge? Oops, made a mistake, sorry. We'll go to this edge, why not? And we want to be a sixteenth of an inch off there, okay? And now maybe this one here, we want this to be to a standard size, so I'm going to say this is one inch 375, that looks good. And now, you know what, maybe we want to borrow, uh, sure, actually let's offset this, let's turn this on. I want to take just this edge, and I want to offset this, this way, some distance, okay? And maybe we want that to be an eighth of an inch only. Perfect. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this oh, right to that edge. And I'm going to bring this right to that edge. And I'm going to go ahead and trim up the difference. So I want to delete that. The next thing maybe I want to do is I'm going to add a couple of big fillets in here. Maybe right there. And right there. Okay. And then just for giggles, we'll do the remaining ones. So we'll do a quarter there, how about a quarter there, there, and there. The whole point here is that I'm just making a profile that I'm going to turn into an extruded shape. Okay? And that extruded shape is going to be what I use to define my insert. Okay? So let's have a look. I'm going to go back to split, I'm going to go back to insert, and I'm going to go by insert by shape. Okay? The shape I'm going to use is this. Okay? The direction that I'm going to go in is Z. And now we're going to give it a second. And you can see it's going to create the necessary data from that shape. I validate. You can see what it's done. It's created the necessary data in there. And away we're going to go. Okay, from here what we want to do is we just need to go and update the design now. So we'll go ahead, go ahead back to our parting shells. And what the software is going to do is it's going to create all the parting shells that it needs again. And this is for the various inserts that we've just created. And you can see the, the surface versions of all of these, including the shutoffs, everything. Okay, we validate that. And then the last step that we're going to do is we're going to validate the blocks. So here what it's doing is it went automatically to the parting shape. Here you can see the solid model of each insert that we've created, which is very, very cool. You can see it's cut the pockets in the cavity shape and the core shape accordingly. Okay. Now you can see here we can move everything dynamically or one by one. We can grab the core shape and just move that. Okay. We can grab this one and just move that. And by the way, here you can rename everything as you want also. But I'm just going to validate. Like that, everything is done. I have my core block, cavity block, and all my little inserts. The very last step that I'm going to make now is I'm going to ask the software to turn this into a derived assembly. Okay? So let's go ahead and just click the button. Again, you can go through and rename if you want. I'm just going to validate. And here the software sends it out to be uh, a bottom-up assembly so that we can use this in conjunction into and insert it into a mold base, for example, or whatever. Like that, you can see we're in our assembly now. This is the assembly that's created, and these are all the individual files that were created for this separation. Okay, so let's have a look. If I go, for example, and I hide this part, this is our insert block, right? This is the part with shrink. I can hide that too. And you can see how everything is coming together. Pretty cool. So that's your first look into Top Solid 7.7 .7, as well as your first look into Top Solid Split for Top Solid 7. I hope you enjoyed the demo and check back soon for when you can download and try this out yourself.